yeah, I'm pretty sure that any reason to play the monk class is dead. This video isn't clickbait and it's not white room theory crafting because I've seen the problems with the monk class firsthand. It all unfortunately started when Tosh's Cauldron of Everything was released. And the thing that destroyed the monk class wasn't even released in the monk section, it was released in the fighter section. The unarmed fighting style makes playing a monk pretty much obsolete. And let me see if I can show you why just with a few examples. So please just bear with me for the next minute. Let's take a second level fighter and a second level monk. The fighter is making two attacks with an action surge and the monk is making three attacks with a flurry of blows. If the fighter has a strength of 16 and the monk has a dexterity of 16, then on average the fighter is going to be doing 15 damage and the monk is going to be doing 16 damage. So far so good, the monk appears to be doing more damage. But now let's jump to a 6th level fighter and a 6th level monk. The fighter with a strength score of 20 is doing 19 damage on average, and then the monk with a dexterity score of 18 is doing about 22 damage on average. Now an action surging fighter is doing about 38 damage, while a monk that's used a flurry of blows is doing about 30 damage. Again, so far so good, it looks like the monk is holding its own. And at first glance you're right, and I believe that this is probably what the designers at Wizards of the Coast were thinking. However, the fighter isn't really behind the monk because of everything else the fighter can do. See, in all these the monk isn't using its bonus action, it has to use its bonus action to get the attacks necessary to beat out the fighter. So with an extra bonus action, a fighter can use things like Second Wind, a Samurai's Fighting Spirit, and Eldritch Knight's many bonus action spells. A fighter also has more hit points. While a monk only has a d8 hit die, a fighter has a d10. Additionally, the fighter's probably wearing heavy armor, therefore they're much harder to hit. And at this point we haven't even included the powerful subclasses that a fighter has access to. The Battlemaster, Psy Warrior, Rune Knight, Echo Knight, all of these subclasses are giving the fighter more damage on its unarmed attacks. If we pick even one of these subclasses, we're out damaging the monk on average. That is, of course, if the monk continuously has key points to spend, and we're not even taking into account that the monk needs to hit every single time to beat the fighter, because with more attacks, that's obviously going to be more misses. A monk literally needs to be perfect in order to keep up with the fighter in terms of unarmed strike damage. Let's say a 6th level fighter misses one of its attacks, and a 6th level monk hits on two of its attacks and misses one. And let's say the fighter rolls for max damage, and the monk? Well, the monk rolls below average. That fighter without any other bonuses is doing 13 points of damage, and the monk is only doing 12 points of damage. And again, they're close. That one point of damage in an actual D&D campaign isn't going to matter much. It's the fact, though, that the fighter can do this while having categorically better abilities than the monk. And to talk about why this is such a problem, we need to get into a little bit of dice math. Essentially, when you roll more dice, you're going to get closer to the mean of those die rolls. So you're going to be more consistent, but also that means hitting the maximum less often. Let me put it in these terms. You have a 12.5% chance to roll maximum on a d8 roll. You have a 6% chance on hitting a maximum roll rolling 2d4s. The average for the 2d4s is higher. Yes, if you were to hit every single attack, you would technically be doing more damage. But one, you're not hitting every single attack. Two, I have a better chance with the fighter of covering my lost damage with one attack. And three, even if the fighter is trailing by one, maybe two points of damage, they still have everything else that the fighter subclasses can offer. Everything else the fighter class can offer. I struggle to think of any monk subclass that I would rather take over a fighter subclass. Say you want a monk that can teleport, like the Way of the Shadow Monk. Well, I'm just going to take an Echo Knight or an Eldritch Knight fighter. Maybe I want a more tactical monk, so I'm going Way of the Open Hand, but... Why wouldn't I just go Battlemaster Fighter and be much more powerful? In just about any way you can think of, you're going to be more consistent and have more options if you just go with a fighter subclass. If you go pure fighter and pure monk, the monk is going to do a little bit more damage but overall will be more limited. And that's just an objective fact. As a monk, you're working with less AC, fewer hit points, and fewer options that are provided to you by your subclass and your overall class in general. And the whole argument for monk over fighter completely flies out the window when you realize that you can just multi-class one level into the monk class. And if you do that, you get the martial arts class feature, which allows you your unarmored AC and the ability to, as a bonus action, 
make an unarmed strike. Now, are there drawbacks with using an unarmored AC as a fighter? Yeah, you're really multi-ability score dependent, but your damage output is going to significantly increase with your unarmed strikes. For one round, you will be hitting as hard at second level as a 10th level monk. That is fucking insane. And it would be one thing if you couldn't feel it in game, but you can feel it in game. An unarmed strike focused fighter just feels more powerful than a regular monk. Again, whether you want to go pure fighter or dip a level or two into monk, the strategy is still the same. Going with the full monk class is just obsolete if you want to play a martial arts based fighter. And again, I understand that monk brings new things to the table. But does a slow fall beat an action surge? Would you rather take deflect missiles or second wind? Yeah, at 6th level having key empowered strikes is cool, but wouldn't you rather have another ability score improvement? I know I would. And pretty much all players would as well. Is it worth sacrificing so much for the monk to get an extra 1, maybe 2 points of damage? No. No it's not. With Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, Wizards of the Coast infringed on the niche that the monk had carved out for itself. Now why would I ever choose the monk class? Now is there a fix that a DM can implement for the monk? I don't know, maybe. Obviously you could increase the martial arts die. Heck, if your monk is a human then you can take the feat Fighting Initiate and get unarmed fighting at level 1. This is something that you can do. However, you're still not getting all the other benefits of a fighter. You're not getting its AC, you're not getting its hit points, you're not getting its abilities. And frankly, I find it very unfair to basically need to pigeonhole a class into taking a certain feat in order to keep up with another class. That really is encroaching on your niche. I hope that with the coming of 1D and D, Wizards of the Coast will take a serious look at the monk class and make some much needed changes. Because yes, you can have fun playing a monk character. I really don't think that's up for debate. Because quite frankly, you can play a character that is suboptimal and still have a lot of fun in 5th edition. But if you are a player that wants to get the most out of your character, I think mathematically it is in your best interest to not play a monk if you want to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat. I think the unarmed fighting style killed any reason to play the monk class. Because the monk doesn't give you anything special that allows you to play a martial artist. At least not really. They're flavored to be like a martial artist, but nothing screams out martial arts. At this point, you can play a fighter who is just as capable, if not more capable. And I wouldn't be making this video if I didn't start to see it creeping up in D&D games. Tasha's Cauldron of Everything has been out for a while now, and I think at this point as a community we are finally beginning to understand just how big of an impact it's made on the D&D community at large. And if this video has made you want to create an unarmed fighting style fighter just to see what the fuck I'm talking about, you can check out this video right here. It covers everything you need to know about a fighter from levels 1 to 5. And thank you for entering the dungeon.